we the people of Ghana uh, beginning to understand tourism and the need to conserve. They've been doing walking safaris in this park for almost 50 years. So what's happened is the old bulls have become very comfortable with humans both on foot and in a vehicle. And you can get much closer to elephants here than any other park in Africa. When they come to see the wildlife, I am always happy because I've been able to do something by protecting them. Amazingly in Ghana today, going to Zena has become an aspiration. It has become something that people wish for, that they dream for, that they save money to do. Maraba, welcome to Zena Lodge. You get to Zena Lodge and the feel is different. It makes you feel like, oh yeah, really, you are in Africa. Anytime the guests arrive and we give them this welcoming waving. And we welcome you from the entrance into the meal lobby. We sit you down, we give you a cold towel. The welcome drink serving calabash, everything. We make you feel at home. The idea was to align the gate with the main building with where we were gonna put these artificial water holes down in the valley below with the sunset. All our rooms are facing the watering hole, which we made a watering hole ourselves to attract the elephants and the other animals during the hot afternoon. You should be able to sit anywhere in this building and someone says, oh, there's elephants at the water hole, and all you have to do is turn your head and see them. So Mali National Park is the largest national park in Ghana. It's 4,577 square kilometers, and we're in the northern region, which is also the largest region. When we had independence in 1957, by then the first president decided, uh, why should we have wildlife and start killing them or destroying them? It's not the best. We should rather make it a, a conservation area. So this is how it started. I was very interested and driven by the ideas of community involvement in conservation and the ideas that nature needed to be valued to be taken seriously. When I started seeing John visiting this park, I was a very small kid. And he was a very popular figure at that time, you know. And all he did was to conserve nature. I asked him and he said he needed a very high graph. We climbed up that hill where John said, Isa, this is a very perfect place for me. As far as you can see, some of the nicest woodland savanna left in this country. I, as a Ghanaian, see Zena Lodge as a monument. Smolin National Park has been there for a very long time. There was only one establishment that was on it and there was no change. This place in July of 2012 was just a grassy hillside. So these water holes, like the one behind me, weren't here. Nothing was here. You realize that we built around what was there, not trying to change anything. With leaving the wildlife corridors in, path, in place, figuring out how can we position this building so we have to remove the least number of trees. Everything in Zena has different themes and elements from, from the essentially Southern Mali Jene architecture. The influence from the Larabanga Mosque, which is one of the oldest mosques in West Africa. We use community labor, paid labor, but the communities to build all of Zena. We're at the height of construction, we had about 150 people working here. Most of the employees are coming from within the local environment. It's not only helping the community around here, but the vision and the mission too is great because they are trying to promote um, tourism in the northern region and also to give jobs to the people around the local, the surrounding areas. Now, um, tourism has gone deep into the genes of the Ghanaian people. We have about 60% being Ghanaians who have visited. The only true path for me to development is not about aid, it's about creating sustainable rural businesses. Businesses, not sustainability necessarily from an environmental perspective, which is important, but businesses that serve a need and last and can provide long-term employment. And we've built this business on building a domestic tourism market, being less cyclical, less susceptible to the threats that tourism provides internationally. And then uh, when you go out and you see the elephants, you see the buffaloes, you see the run antelopes, the hartebis, the water box, all the animals, it makes you happy. Zena itself is a community-based program. We have about 33 communities that surround the park. We do visit two communities, i.e. the Mognori community and the Larabanga community. We do the canoe safari on a river that called the Moli River. We introduce them to the organic shea butter that is produced from the shea tree, which is actually uh, one of the commercial um, businesses for the local women. In all our chalets, 
when you go inside, you'll find the soaps made from shea butter and all the lotions, everything comes from shea butter. It's an important commodity here. And, you know, I mean, as part of promoting the North, as part of promoting what we have here, we don't want to leave no stone unturned. We are ensuring that anything that is of value, we lift it up. We usually invite this local community dance, local dance troops that come and perform at some local dances to just entertain our guests. The food is amazing. We have, I would say, if not the best, one of the best chefs in Ghana. I always visualize, dream, every single day, what I want to produce or create. We translate our traditional cuisine on an international level. We collect greens, herbs, spice, and vegetables from the local markets. We have uh, an individual selection of the eggs organically produced. We have a nomadic farm not too far away from here that we get freshly squeezed milk directly from the cows to process for uh, yogurt for the breakfast service. Sustainability is core to the Zana brand, and I'm a big believer that sustainability is not something you do as an add-on or as a separate department. It should be core to the, your beliefs, the same way that community development should be part of the DNA of the companies. Our water system is completely solar-powered. All of our water are from uh, three boreholes that we put into the park. We treat all of our water so that we can actually serve our water directly to guests and as much as possible minimize plastic. We want to conserve energy. Even when you look into our rooms, you realize that we have a chest filled with beverages, but it's not in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so we fill it and then we, we do all those things because we want to conserve energy. We want people to take away what a special place Mali National Park is. Um, what a gem it is for the entire country because it's been relatively ignored. Um, they're constantly struggling to maintain the park. I believe today that Zena has become a watershed. A watershed for the tourism sector in Ghana. And I believe that we will look back in 5, 10, 15 years and they'll be before Zena and after Zena. And everybody's not curious to visit Moli National Park and also to see wildlife. <laughs>